There we go. Didn't have audio there for a second. Hello, everyone. Well, welcome to our last official week of class. We have made it unbelievable. What a semester. Wow. Um, if you'd have told me this is where we would be at the end of uh, our 16 weeks together, I wouldn't have believed you. So I hope this finds every one of you again safe and well. Um, Crazy, crazy world we live in currently. Uh, I wanna thank you first of all for the past two weeks. Um, the past two weeks of class have been very difficult. I have tried arduously to share a couple of, of films uh, with you and I, I just haven't been able to manage that. So uh, there, there are two hurdles, there are two obstacles getting in my way. One, uh, YouTube likes to really keep track of copyright and so if i upload something that is um, identical to uh, a, a film or something that somebody's copyrighted it won't play and so we encountered that two weeks ago uh, i encountered that again this week trying to again regurgitate what i was trying to do two weeks ago um and then also with our blackboard our Blackboard, if you've ever tried to upload a video, it's very limited in the amount of space that you can upload to our Blackboard. And so it, it's, made, it's made it very difficult. Um, I was able to share that in, in, a, in my previous uh, teaching of this class. And so I feel like you've got, you guys got, this, uh, got a little bit gypped, um, so to speak, um, in the content in that, uh, in that I was hopeful to show you those those videos it made more of a, an impact summarizing so what we know from from science and looking back over the semester is that uh, adverse childhood experiences have an effect on our neurological development uh, some of these hallmark uh, kind of symptoms of, of adverse childhood trauma uh, maybe you know manifest in troubled relationships, uh, trouble with self-regulation. And by that, I mean anxiety disorders, uh, depressive disorders, maybe even bipolar. Um, you know, think about it, it, attachment disorders uh, with not being able to trust people, uh, maybe, you know, getting overly dependent in relationships, maybe even situations where, uh, you know, people maybe even develop a, a personality disorder. I, I think I had one of you mentioned, uh, you know, a, a higher correlation of, well, I actually had a former student mention there's a higher correlation with borderline personality disorder with, with higher ACEs. So, um, you know, these things make sense if, if a person when they're growing up experiences, you know, some, some things that would make them not trust other people, trust their environment around them, uh, you are going to have, uh, by and large, a more hypervigilant aware uh, awareness and being about about you in other words you kind of your engine runs a little bit higher than other person than other people thinking about the profession and this is what i kind of wanted us to think about the last couple of weeks and even with our clients and other people that we work with you know when somebody presents to you as angry as upset as quick as short as short-tempered as dismissive um you know uh, it's important for us, you know, using, you know, our knowledge from this class to take that breath ourselves, relax. The only person that we can honestly control in that exchange, and that's questionable the degree to which we can do that, is ourselves. So that's really what I want you to take away here from the last two or three weeks is that you will find clients that are hard to get along with, that are, are um, not obstinate, that are defiant, that are um, disgruntled, that may treat you with disrespect, may be just hard to get along with. And if you can see past that into what happened, then you have, and, and ask that question, what happened that's that what why this person is acting this way rather than well f you too you know I, I forget about you i'm done you know i just done because that's our natural human reaction is if we're given a dose of anger or spite 
it's our natural human reaction to respond with that. So where you all are going as professionals, it is extremely important that that you have that own safe place within yourself that you can go back and, and, and withdraw and say, okay, it's okay. I don't have to respond like this. I'm gonna choose a different course. That is really, really important. Let me share this week's module with you, this week's information. So uh, I have a few goals. I, I also, I'm gonna in, uh, interject now while I'm thinking about it. I'm also gonna introduce the final. So the final, I'm actually going to uh, release this week, uh, when, when, after your first post is due, which is Thursday at midnight, I'm actually gonna release the final. If you wanna, you know, I don't want you to sacrifice your posts because I want you to have some interaction this week too. You're, you're still responsible for your, your normal posts, but, um, and you have until, uh, I believe, what is it, into May. You have May, you're going to have April 30th till May 7th to, to take this final. So um, you'll have you'll have a window. Um, so let's go jump into the outline for this last week. Then we'll talk about the final in a minute. Okay. Well, access denied. All right, let's try to log in again. Apparently, I was messing around and eating dinner and lost track of time. Here it is. All right, module 15. Creating resilient clinicians. That is really honestly my goal for this whole class. You know, kind of the centerpiece as we got on the back end of ACEs there was this, uh, you know, focusing on resilience, focusing on instilling and creating resilience. It is extremely important for us as clinicians to manifest, exhibit, model resilience, exude resilience. We, each one of you, given your career choices, have chosen a, um, a noble yet arduous path. And by arduous, I mean the folks that I just talked about a few minutes ago that are going to be tough, the children that are going to be tough, that are going to be hypervigilant, that are going to be nasty, that are going to be mean sometimes. And, and just maybe you just think, well, this just isn't a person that is friendly. That's the folks that a lot of times we're going to be dealing with. Um, and it's the, the folks that have this rough, rough exterior that are the ones that need that extra help. And so, when we have that, when we, when we encounter a lot of resistance from clients or on the other side of that with, you know, the middle part of this course where we're talking about trauma narratives, where we're talking about actually delving into finding out, okay, what happened? That's difficult. And that, my friends, is, is just a hard thing when, when you continually hear story after story that's just heartbreaking and of, of, of situations that, that children should never have to endure, whether you're hearing that from an adult, whether you're hearing that from a child, um, I can tell you that that weighs on you. I had a, I had a clinician, she was uh, in her first two years, she was still under supervision. And uh, generally folks will have one or two really kind of acute clients on their case, uh, maybe 20, 25 kids, people, she had five children on her caseload of 2025 that were priority one child, invest, child welfare investigations. And it, it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot on her. I mean, it, was, it, it weighed a lot on her. And, and I worried about her burning out. Um, and, and she kind of she jumped in and it was like she, she kind of thrived on I want to help is like, you know, like most of us, this huge heart to want to go in and help and try to try to save and fix and and do everything that she could to protect. And she actually went on from that job to working intensive outpatient to where like everyone and so she had like a regular outpatient caseload was like five of 20 clients for, you know, 20, which is a high percentage, 25 percent or like serious, serious trauma. She went to work at an intensive outpatient facility. And it wasn't here in town, but 
virtually every one of her clients then had this very high hay score, you know, hypervigilance, just, you know, lots of, lots of dysfunction around them. And she eventually, I, I, she eventually, I, she, she's, she's still licensed. She, she's still working as a counselor, except she significantly backed off of that. Um, you know, she, she really pushed it hard for three, maybe four years. And that was enough. Um, from my own uh, professional experience, I worked four years as a children's therapist at Metal Lake Hospital. That was, well, I was a charge therapist for two of those years, but my primary job was children's unit therapist. And I was toast, uh, very honestly. I, I, it is hard to prevent vicarious trauma where you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning thinking about a story a child told you. Um, some of this is, is good because it's, when I would do that, I would wake up and I'd write down, okay, what do I need to do? Here's some, th here's some ideas for my next session. Here's some ideas for protection. Here's where I should go with my techniques. But if that's all that you deal with, then very honestly, you get burned out. Um, and I, I can, I can say I, I've, I've been there and, uh, and I want to prevent that. Um, as we talked about the past week, um, if a lot of the systems that you all are going into, whether it be public schools, whether it be, you know, mental health care, whether it be in the VA, these are all very stressed systems. They don't give a lot of resources. They're, they're just not overflowing. I mean, people are kind of scraping to, to make sure that and being creative with what they have. And so, uh, you know, if you're working, you know, in public systems, there's already a burden of, of very stretched thin resources with time, with seeing a lot of people. Um, but also the people that are around you, as we noted last week, I mean, the helpers tend to have higher A scores, <laughs> which is in a way good because you get to empathize and understand better and you have this passion to help. But then when you're burned out and you're, you know, on, on edge and, and, and you're past your capacity, what happens? Every one of us breaks down. Every one of us says something that they regret or maybe acts in a way that they wish they wouldn't have. And so this section here is to help prevent that. Uh, the sanctuary model is really about, it's a top down, everybody's included approach. If you, if you got anything from last week, it really, the sanctuary basically means safety and security because our, the amygdala is not going to fire and cause all this adrenaline if we're feeling safe. Our amygdala is going to be chilled and we're going to be chilled and we're going to have that cognitive part of our brain in control rather than the lower part of our brain where we're just reacting. So finding that place for yourself, whether it's, you know, spending time with family, whether it's meditation, whether it's prayer, whether it's, you know, your spiritual life, whether it's outdoor activity, whether it's exercise, whether it's reading a book when you're not having to read everything for school, whatever it is, however you unplug, whatever you do to nurture your spirit, that is absolutely necessary for you to survive working with people who have been through trauma day after day after day. You have to take daily time to practice and to take care of yourself because I've of all my time in the field, I've seen it time and time again where people burn out, have compassion fatigue, where you have compassion fatigue is where, and you guys will see this. Let me give you the hallmark of, of compassion fatigue. When people start blaming, well, if they just get off their lazy asses and it's these damn parents' fault and it's the system's fault because they just give handouts. If you're in that boat, you have compassion fatigue you are in a bad spot, my friend. And if you see other professionals around you that are exuding that attitude, that are you know, exhibiting this, that's a bad thing because it infects an, it infects an organization and it, it, it affects morale and it also limits, remember one of the biggest predictors of success in therapy is that you believe in the process and that your client believes in you and they believe in the process. And when you show up to work and you have a bad attitude and you don't think anything's working because everything sucks, it is going to suck. 
because you're helping to be part of the problem. And people out there that have this, you know, they just, they're just not going to learn. It's just, they're stuck in that job and that's called burnout. If people give up, that's where compassion fatigue is when somebody starts getting angry and blaming other people for things that are, it's, it's, it's trauma. If you can't heal trauma, you're not going to make a difference. But if you, if you stop caring, you're like, yeah, it's just the way it is. I'm just not going to deal with it. And a lot of our systems out there that you're going to be a part of have people embedded that have worked there for years that are like that. And I'm telling you, fight it, fight it, fight it. Please, please bring that energy. Bring that, bring that energy. I stayed at, the longest I stayed at a place was eight years. And I felt my energy dragging and I left. Don't be that person. Don't perpetuate a system that is apathetic, that doesn't care because that's not going to make a difference. That said, um, let me jump into the rest of what I have. The pro call. The pro call is really, uh, it's just a tool. And, and I've used this uh, a couple of times to, uh, over the years when I since that uh, when I was at youth and family, I sensed that morale was kind of low. I just wanted to have a check. You know, I want to check in. I want people to share. I want to have a discussion about this. And so this is the actual instrument. And you'll be able to take this. And uh, I, hey, we're, we're under some weird stress right now. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking about this. I haven't taken this in a while, but now that we've had COVID and we've been locked up for a month and the, you know, things are uncertain. Um, I, I'm tempted to take this myself and participate on the discussion board with you. Uh, so, uh, so no, I would, I would really encourage you to, to, you know, use the scale, add it up at the end, and then it'll give you, it'll give you a, 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 you know, you reverse score a few of those, which means you flip the score around if you've never done that, which means uh, it, it gives you a scale, a table to help you reverse the score. So you have to look at items 1, 4, 15, 17, 29, and flip those scores around. So if you put a one, you change it to a five. And then you add up your total score, and it'll show you your, uh, your level of compassion satisfaction, which means that we're actually getting satisfaction from our jobs. If you're in a good place, if you are working a job and it's a good environment, and because each one of you are led to work with somebody, you're feeling a calling, if you find yourself in a good place, you will have compassion, satisfaction, and that will renew your spirit. As you go through and you do these self-care things, you know, like I talked about with running and working out or whatever it is, a prayer or meditation, you working on the job, seeing somebody improve, seeing a child get better, seeing somebody lose these symptoms of anxiety and this hypervigilant and they're functional, that gives you satisfaction. That will give each one of you that are enrolled in this class uh, compassion, satisfaction. That's the goal of this thing because you're going in to not to just get a paycheck. You're going in to make a difference. And so when you do make a difference, I can promise you it fills you up. It fills your cup. Um, now, so you've got secondary trauma questions and also burnout. So uh, please add these up. Can consider this for yourself. I'm going to ask that you share. Um, if you feel safe enough, if you don't feel safe enough to share with your with your peers, that's okay. Um, you know, if you're in a, a situ uh, sensitive situation, you don't want to like, exp you know, it is a group. I mean, uh, I, I'm not. I would ask that y'all keep, like I said in the beginning, keep this confidential. Uh, but anyway, um, these are the these are the discussion questions for this week. Identify three ways where you currently care for your mental health. Uh, how effective has this been in helping you maintain compassion and drive to help others? A lot of you are in the field. A lot of you are working. Uh, then reflecting on the information from this week's module, please discuss special considerations for therapists, plural, who work with traumatized clients. Please identify a network of at least three resources for therapists who work with people who have been victims of tra trauma and traumatic events. These can be duplicated from your own list if appropriate. Um, or, so you have a choice. Or you can go, if you, you know, if you want to do the pro call like I just talked about, um, go ahead and jump in and do the pro call. What might 
make the score increase or decrease. So think about what make make that score go up or down. And what might be some ways for you to effectively combat compassion fatigue? That's it. That'll be our last assignment. Wow, we're done. Yay. There's the final. Uh, so the final will be released uh, and you'll have until Thursday, May 7th to complete it. It's, it's available here and it will be also, I added a link over here on the left-hand side if you can see my cursor. It'll also be available over here. Oh my goodness, we're at the end. Um, I have learned a lot from you. You all have put in a lot of passion into this course and I, I'm inspired by I'm inspired by you guys uh, because of all the effort that you put in. You have worked hard. So, in the middle of all this, con congratulations! Pat yourselves on the back. This is this is not an easy course. I, I wish that we could have done the, the project. I'm sure that uh, everybody's broke up that you didn't get to do the project uh, because I feel um, in the design it allows you to d delve into something that you're really interested in. Um, and, and kind of pull that up. So if you did, you know, graduate and, and wanted to really focus in on one area, you know, I hope that you'll take, and again, this is, this is not exhaustive. This isn't everything that's out there for trauma, for sure. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of dip your toe in the water to kind of see, hey, this is what it, trauma looks like. Uh, this is kind of where it comes from, you know, uh, this is where adverse childhood experiences really lead to these kind of effects. Uh, in people, in children, in organizations, in society. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, that, uh, hopefully that goal has been accomplished, uh, at least to some degree with all this extra stress we've been going under. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to miss you guys. You guys were a good class. Uh, if you need anything, please reach out to me. Please email if you encounter any trouble over the next week or two. Um, otherwise, gang, uh, I'll see you. Take care.